So you woke up one day and you were convinced that gardening is the way to go and you are ready to start. You want to get in touch with nature, you want to you wanna eat healthy for yourself, for your family. It's a form of physical exercise without having to hit the gym. You want all these things, you are ready. But let's consider some things before starting the journey. Being also a way to relieve stress, gardening has been shown to allow someone to relax and in this way reduce stress. So anyway, there's so many reasons why you could start gardening. Let's dive into uh, things to consider before starting gardening. Before starting, you have to understand your space. Are you going to be planting in the balcony? Is it going to be in the backyard or the front yard? Mine is in the front yard. As, as a front yard, you know, the entrance has to be beautiful. And you have to understand the size, the orientation, and the sunlight exposure. This way you'll be able to know what plants to plant in what section because some plants they like to be in direct sunlight others like to be in partly shade others like to be in the shade so considering the orientation of the sun you'll be able to know which place exactly to place what plants and that takes us to choosing the plants as we have said before uh, about the sunlight uh, exposure you have to consider when when you're choosing your plants you have to you have to choose the plants of foods that you like to eat the things that you eat the most the things that you enjoy to eat this way, this way it's going to motivate you to work and continue working because you know gardening is an endless job and you should research the plants that are suitable for your climate that are suitable for your soil type some plants they prefer acidic uh, soils and some plants are neutral soils you should consider also having like you know, apart from the edible plants, you should have ornamental plants because you want the beauty also. Like non-edible plants. I did not consider that, but now I am like, next season I'm just going to fill my garden with, um, with, flower, with plants that produce flowers. Because after I planted this spring, after I planted cosmos, I am in love. Oh my goodness. I actually don't know if it will grow the whole year, but that is to, to, to be found out. They say it's perennial. I wonder if it's perennial that the leaves remain green throughout or it dies and comes back next spring to be found out. And yay, plan your layout. As I said, my garden is in the, is in the front yard. So when you open a gate, when an, an, a guest comes in, it's the first thing they see. I have used raised bed in the garden. And I arranged it in a way that was pleasing to my eyes. Of course, garden layout contributes to overall um, garden aesthetics. If that's important for you, you know. Plan where to put different uh, plants. Plan uh, the, the sitting area if you're gonna be, if you're gonna put a sitting area for you or the place where you really harvest. You put the plants before you take your video, you know, to show what you have harvested. You consider the pathways where, where you're gonna you're gonna be passing and moving your your food. If you're gonna use a wheelbarrow, you know, you're gonna need a wheelbarrow, you know, or some form of uh, something to carry your, your produce depending on how large your garden is if you just need to just walk there and pick and move consider that so in between my my raised beds on the pathways some people put um, wood chips you know I haven't done that yet I have the intention of doing that in the near future so in, the, in my pathways the grass grows like widely and you have to consider that you're going to be cutting grass. If you have a lawnmower, you have to consider how big your lawnmower is before you make the parts. Or you're going to be moving a wheelbarrow. How wide is the wheelbarrow? Is it going to pass there? Because I have some spaces. Because I didn't, actually, I don't think I consider this. I just eyeballed. But luckily, I ended up having, I ended up getting a lawnmower that is much more smaller and it could be able to pass in the parts. I still have some parts that are much more smaller because I wanted to have more raised beds. And who cares about the pathways? You can ju jump over and take some food, you know, from the <laughs> from the reeds. But anyway, consider these things. So consider these things for a visual and harmonious, uh, appealing environment. Soil health. So consider if you're planting directly on the ground, consider the the the, the pH of your soil. Consider um, if the soil needs amendments, you know, it needs compost. 
of course the soil needs compost if you want to grow vigorous plants you have to add compost you have to put mulch so I didn't actually do the soil test because I put the raised beds and in the raised, raised beds I filled it with I filled them because in the beginning um, I I couldn't spend so much to fill the whole raised bed with the with the soil so I filled it halfway with the wood chips and then I filled with with, the, with soil and compost and then I started my planting journey let's talk about what I say so in the beginning I actually didn't water enough when I first started gardening my garden my garden suffered a bit because I didn't understand how much water they actually need I was like and I would move ahead I was also considering that the bill is gonna be so much higher if I you know if I water more than I was watering in the end my plants suffered at the beginning until I realized you know you have started gardening and until you have a well dug on your property you're gonna have to water the plants adequately if I want the work of my hands you know the, the sweating that I'm sweating there to have to give me something that I am proud and I'm excited about watering is an art in gardening you have to learn about the watering needs of your plants and create a watering schedule that prevents over watering under watering and I, the game changer here is using drip irrigation I know one day I'll have a drip irrigation I don't have it yet and my plants suffer during the summer holidays when we decide to go on holiday my, I come back and it's all because the temperatures here in Italy is like 39 degrees 40 degrees it gets in August especially end of July it's really 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 hard you know it's not raining it's just they can have a drip irrigation I think it's a game changer I actually have a neighbor during the beginning of the season he plants his tomatoes and puts all the puts all his produce there he has irrigation scent he puts all the compost and everything he goes away and then when he comes he just comes to harvest like oh, I'm so jealous I'm so jealous why me, I'm up in the morning watering or in the evening watering day in, day out. Or maybe I skip a day and then depending depending on how hot, how dry, how if it's raining, if it's raining, oh, I can rest. But anyway, so my dream is to have an irrigation system. I think that one is just going to be a game changer. And then the produce that comes from his garden, they're like so juicy, they're like so huge. I'm like this lazy this lazy fruits this lazy <laughs> lazy produce they have everything they have everything set to water every day they don't like anything and just how, how unfair is that really I'm happy for you with a good guy really you know actually motivates me to work hard on my on my <laughs> And then there's a maintenance routine. You know, in the garden there's pruning, there's weeding, there's uh, taking care of pest problems because there are going to be pest problems. The regular attention will keep your garden its best throughout the seasons. So if you don't know much about pruning, inform yourself about pruning. If you put fruit trees, like I put fruit, fruit trees also, and you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, have the idea of having a front yard um, a front yard orchard an urban orchard. But let's talk about sustainability we have you know we have to be responsible gardeners we have to think about the ecological impacts of the, the practices that we practice in our gardens talk about pesticides Look for organic ways of dealing with pests instead of taking chemical stuff and spraying it on your food, which end up in your body. They are toxins and they end up interfering with your health. It goes against the whole point of setting a garden if you're going to poison your food to poison yourself. So, incorporate native plants so you can support the local wildlife. Conserve water through efficient irrigation systems let's not water let's not waste water you know, let's just be wise and do the right thing uh, last but not least um, gardening is a patient's game it is a patient's person's playground well if you're not patient 
and you want to garden, you're going to have to learn to be patient. I'm learning to be patient. Are we there yet? Are we going to get? Maybe. <laughs> but at least, you know, you just get to learn to wait and understand and just you know, learn that things have their season. You, you just don't plan to see that things grow the next day. There's a process to thing and things and eventually hope that uh, it kind of influences our lives uh, in the long run. And be prepared to learn from failure and uh, celebrate success along the way. Continue, let's continue learning because in in, uh, in gardening there's always lots of new things to learn about, not lots of uh, ways to learn, to improve, but to make better, you know, to help your gardening be better. Lastly, remember gardening is meant to be enjoyable. You know, if it feels good to you, do it and do it with your whole heart, regardless of successes and failures. Observe the subtle changes and appreciate the beauty you've created. We are actually part of nature, part of creation. We are creating in our garden, working hand in hand with nature. It's so lovely. It's work, but it's worth it. Thank you for sticking around and watching this video to the end. And I hope you got something useful for, from this. Like, subscribe, and um, hit the notifications bell so that you can be informed every time I put up a video. And uh, yeah, till next time.